Shirts and skins, let's get it. Yo. Shirts and skins and we back again. The best coverage in college sports, we come to win. With Brandon, Mark, and Matt, no one go hard as that. Share with your folks and they'll learn where it all be at. It's just three of the guys, childhood friends that be setting the vibe with a few hot takes, jokes, and predictions. Love the Boise State, we now welcome you to listen. Shirts and skins, let's go. Bronco Nation, what is up? This is the Shirts and Skins podcast. I am Matt Lamb. I got Mark Moss in studio today. We are without Brandon Miner, but we've got a special guest filling in. B team. <laughs> we got a substitute. Taylor Whitney. Thanks for joining us, Taylor. Thank you. Thanks Third for time, right? It's a yeah, solid. How many times have you been on? This is fourth time, I think. Fourth time. Yeah. This is like the anniversary, though, because I, I think I filled, filled in, in the for first time me. when Brandon was in Mexico. Okay. Last in Mexico, time. and now he's in Mexico oh. again. Does he do this like every year, this week or something? Feels like it. Huh. That are like every quarter, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. That <guy laughs> time shares or whatever. Good yeah, job. but we're here. We are here. Because we're not in Mexico. Heck no, we're not. We got jobs to work. We got families to take care of. I don't know what Brandon's doing. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we're coming off a 28-7 win over the University of Hawaii. Um, Kind of a weird game last night. <laughs> That's my first weird, thing I say right yeah, there. Yeah, Mark. I didn't look over Mark's notes. <laughs> weird game. Uh, I mean, nine o'clock start. You're playing in Hawaii. Uh, just had a very weird feel to it. I don't know what everybody else thought, but um, just felt like it took forever to get going. Um, we, you, you saw some weird stuff. Uh, uh, I mean, penalty reviews. We had a couple targeting yep. issues. Yep. We had a referee <laughs> went down. Ha, have we heard any updates on this referee? I, I haven't. That didn't well, look. He's probably not dead. I don't think. Yeah, he's I think would have heard good. that, and he helped himself into the. Yeah, he fought off the stretcher. Like yeah. he said, "I'm not doing that." I, he looked pissed though. Like he was like really like. I don't know if he wasn't gonna. Yeah, well, we shouldn't make, <laughs> make jokes about it. <laughs> that didn't look good though. Um, right. Hopefully he's all right. But that took a long time. It was what a 15 minute delay probably. Yeah, because it's like, look, we have a late start. You know, nine o'clock start. This game is going to end at like two a.m. Yep. That was my concern. <laughs> well, yeah. that was weird. But is it weird? Maybe we're just spoiled and expect our games to be a certain way now. Yeah, uh, is something we can talk about too. I think. But no, yeah. I mean, there's definitely that. I think we should talk about that. Um, but it, I think there were some things about it that were weird, um, like that. Aside from us being sp- spoiled fans this year a little bit, but. I thought the the most interesting thing was that there, it just seemed like, well, first of all, we were only up six points for like almost at least yeah. two quarters straight. You know what I mean? Because we were and, up 13-0, uh, right? 13-0, then they scored. Yep. And then it was 13-7 until the fourth quarter from the second. You know, no one scored in the third. And it was like, if you really think back, I mean, well, that's one score. That's one touchdown. That's one bad play. That's one pick six, and we're down. Right? I mean, it was very much a game. Or one fourth down stop, which happened, right? Uh, it was 13-7, and we threw the fourth down play to Strawn. Right. And got the fourth, oh, sure. the conversion, right? Yeah. It was 13-7, and we were at our end of the field. Yeah, that yeah, that was ballsy. I mean, two fourth down yeah, we had and two of shorts those. that yeah. were both throws, which was in – I mean, again, and we talked about last week, goes back to yeah, the we power were three. I think. We were three. We were three. We were three, oh, right. we were three for but three. But two of them were – like fourth Short. and less than one yeah. type of thing. Um, but, the, but yeah. yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting just that, I mean, it was one score game for a long time. And my first thought was, and I don't think, I mean, first we will talk about the defense, but that, in my opinion, that type of situation is why Maddox Madsen is the quarterback because he didn't, again, he wasn't as good as last week. Last week was his best game of the year. I thought he was, Adequate, fine, good. But what he didn't do there was lose the game. And not saying Malachi would have, but that's one bad play away from losing. From, you know, because you go down and all of a sudden momentum and everything, you're on the road. You don't know. And, uh, and, and one thing that we know about Madsen is that, you know, he doesn't take many sacks. He, doesn't, he hasn't had bad picks. I mean, you look at the Utah game. <laughs> I mean – a great quarterback lost the game for him, right? I mean, you can lose games as a quarterback yeah. with one or two picks. Hawaii had two um, sacks. 
Get to, they had two sacks, yep. yeah. But uh, anyways, I thought... Th- there was a little bit of a stretch there with Madsen where you're kind of like, ooh. Mm, yeah, I had a couple bad balls in a row. he overcame it, and mm-hmm. I think that's what good quarterbacks do is they find a way to figure it out. And I agree with you. There's a reason he's our starting quarterback because he has proven that he can overcome those kind of lackluster, maybe little dips. I mean, th- mm-hmm. they're normal, right? Yep. Where you're playing in a game and um, you throw behind a receiver, uh, you throw... At the feet? The, well, yeah, there was, there was a few yeah. that were short. I'm trying to remember. There was one that almost got picked, right? Or was that? Am I that was pretty like That's pretty much every game. He's had <laughs> one. Genji caught it off the, off the That's deflection. right. That's yeah. right. That's the play. Okay. Oh, that's that Genji yeah, caught. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy, too. So played through it, found a way yeah. to overcome it. Uh, Madsen finishes 17 to 25, 217 yards passing. Yeah. Uh, two TDs, uh, completion percentage of 68%. Yeah, I mean, nothing so, to call home no, about. But, yeah, not but amazing. I, I think the point is that what you described is what happened. He had a dip. He didn't have a losing play, which that game was ripe for losing plays. You know, uh, one or two plays could have swung the game. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. I mean, that that fumble that wasn't a fumble, the Genty, you know, uh, if yeah. that's a fumble, I don't know, man. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm on record being a Mets and honk, and I've been underwhelmed so far this year. Mm-hmm. But I, like we're starting to see some trends, like the underthrows. We didn't see that last year, I don't think. But he wasn't in enough, consistently enough, to see some some of those trends come up. But yeah, he seems he started at like four for four or five for five, and then he had a dip six after that. Six for six, I think. Yeah, and I was like, dang, okay, he keeps he keeps trending up, and then he kind of did the same thing he's been doing, where he has this lull, where he's a little bit off. So I don't know what that's all about. I don't know if he's getting nervous feet. I don't know if I ever heard anybody talk about coming back from that injury. Like, I still feel like he looked better last year in that crappier situation. I, I think he had less to lose last year. He's just, right. right? Like, he's playing, like, I'm just going out to win this thing. I think he was a little more, I don't know if reckless, maybe more courageous when he was running the ball. Mm-hmm. I think I look back to the UCF game where he yeah, kind of powered. Th- he true. had a good run. He took a hard hit. Um, I think he's a little apprehensive, and I th- probably the probably Dirk and the offensive staff or a little more reluctant to have him run right? because he does have that injury. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I wish camper would have caught that, that one he dove for because yeah. that, that could have been a touchdown, but that was kind of interesting with the 13 to seven is those first two drives. I was being critical of Matson, even though I'm like, I hate it when I get start to get that way. <laughs> but um, I think if he's playing better, those are touchdowns because there was a couple of throws I think could have been there or he missed and those could have been touchdowns, which made the game a lot closer with those field goals, so yeah, yeah the red zone wasn't at, at least it didn't start out that way. It was two field goals to start, wasn't it? Two field goals. Or I think then we we had a touchdown. We've scored on every red zone possession the entire season, unless we did we kneel down inside the twenty to end the game. Yeah, yeah. it says we're three for four. The last, the last two games. <laughs> oh, that sucks. The last two games. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Oh yeah, that is the last two games. That's right. But. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I had that down. Those field goals early on, those did had you, been touchdowns. I'm curious, did you guys ever have the feeling of we're going to lose this game, or was it always like, no. we'll, we'll figure it out? I never did. So, other weird thing, not that you guys need to near, know about it, but, like, I didn't watch the game That's what later. we're here for, Mark, Yeah, yeah I know. You weird. guys want to hear my... Your weird stuff. I, yeah, my weird... Oh, and it could get weird. Uh, <laughs> no, we had some uh, plans. Yeah. <laughs> we had some plans last night, so I didn't get home... Start so I started the game late. I caught up by the very yeah, end. Yeah, you weren't up. in on the regular so group text. There, no, I wasn't. And I knew. I was you like, guys Mark's noticed? Not watching yeah, it. yeah. I saw. So I, I like put it on silent because I didn't want to be. You know, I didn't want to be seeing things. And I saw there was like eighty five texts <laughs> <laughs> after the game. But um, anyways, um, I a few times I got nervous enough that I wanted to like look and see the score, but I didn't. But generally speaking, I was like, we're gonna pull it out. We're gonna pull it out. Um, but it was close. It could have been. It could have gone the other way, um, for sure. Um, Tubner, I wanted to talk about Tubner. Yeah. We, we, you know. By the way, if you're waiting to hear about Ashton Chenty, we'll get to him. So yeah, stay oh yeah, tuned. we'll get to him. <laughs> but Tubner, yeah. Oh well, no, just like I think that he got so he got. I mean, he's just. We've talked about him plenty. Uh, he's having a great year. I think he's having a great year. Um, glad he came back. I think when he first said he was coming back after last year's kind of struggles, it seemed like I was like, Oh, really? But he, I think he led the team in tackles. He was, he probably wasn't as bad as we thought he was last year, but boy, um, a couple things. One, he's, he's valuable. Um, 
when he went out, they brought someone else in, and that's when they got their touchdown. It was like two big plays. There was a screen play that number 41 came in. I don't even know who 41 is. I haven't seen him very much. And all of a sudden, he's in the game, and he no misses. No offense, he looked like the punter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. He did look like a punter. I had the exact same thoughts. I'm glad you're the one that <laughs> said it, though. Like, that's a linebacker? Why is the punter? <laughs> yeah, he but. He got beat, man. He, well, well, and he missed the. So, my kids watched the game this morning. They didn't stay up last night, but they were watching it this morning. So, I kind of got to see it again, part of it. And uh, 41 kind of missed the, the. There was a screenplay that went like 50 yards. Uh-huh. And he missed the tackle. I did see that, too. And then the ne- two plays later, he's the one that gets dinged for the touchdown. It's like, oh, and I don't think he played again. I think they shifted things around. So Tubner is pretty darn uh, valuable. And I'll lead with that. But be, behind that, man, you got to know you got to know the rules, right? I mean, uh, that was that was clear targeting, <laughs> right? I mean, launched himself. Yeah. Def- it was a great – if he goes to the chest, it's a great shot. Chest but, or shoulder. Man, well, I mean, like, he leads with the shoulder. Those things but are tubes, tough, But Tubes man. is that guy, though. He – you give him credit because he flies around and he will smack. He, he will smack into anybody. I love it. Yeah, I love it. But, but he's valuable with, and you can't yeah, lose him like that. With that reckless abandon comes the penalties that happen. And yep. you're flying head first into guys. And yeah. it it looked just like a pre um, pre targeting. Yeah, you're like great hit. That'd be a sweet hit. <laughs> yeah. Post targeting, not so not great. so good. But um, anyways, glad it was in the first half. I still hate that rule. I hate that rule. There was a there's another game I had on. I mean, they they were saying one of their best defensive players went out first quarter. Uh, for Bo- Bowen Phelps is the name. I don't know. 40, number forty one. Yeah, for he goes Boise out. State. Tubner goes out. They're out for the game. Oh, Bowen Phelps. Yeah, I'm Boise saying State. he's for Boise State. Um, oh, it was the Arizona game. Uh, BYU Arizona. For like the third play of the game, they're they like just finished talking about how good this linebacker is targeting yeah. out for the game. It's like. It is such yeah. a brutal – I know we've talked about that. That is such a brutal call to be out for the entire game. These kids work all year round for 12 and, opportunities, yeah. and they make a mistake. I mean, I'm all for, like, making it a bigger penalty. I know 15 yards is the biggest penalty they have because I still – Brandon disagrees a little bit, and, we'll, you know, he's not here to defend himself. But I still think it needs to be the biggest penalty because what they're trying to do with head trauma and concussions and the dangers of that – I don't know if it's a 30-yard penalty. I don't know if it's a something bad. But to have the kid not play, I think just sucks. Or may, or maybe it, eject him on the second one. I don't well, know. Well, I just think there should be two. I think there should be, like, the egregious launching yourself. Like, that is horrible. Maybe you're gone, maybe you're gone for that one. But then, the like, sometimes you, you see – now, I think both of them in the game last night were both pretty bad. But there's plenty we've seen throughout the year that's like – they graze it or they whatever, and it's inadvertent or the the the, like the, the person organ one, yeah, yeah, or the person with the ball dips their head and it's, it's definitely accidental and they get tossed. That just sucks, but it is what it is. Did you see uh, BJ's post game? I didn't he, I, credit I him on this, but all, apparently but. his Tubner's family was there again. Oh, like just like the Oregon <laughs> game, he got kicked out <laughs> in the first Dude, half. And he's got to ask him not to come. <laughs> like guys, watch on Poor TV. Family, this yeah. is bad karma. Yeah, it sucks. Good um, thing it was in the first half though, because it would. Yep. Bad now he can play the UNLV so we game. We have everyone available. That yeah, can we I'm talk about Ashton Genty? We we probably should. It's we probably been should. Fifteen We're, minutes. We yeah. haven't touched said the name, but it's easy to start with Ashton, right? Uh, what are our thoughts? Uh, it, it felt like I said a weird game. Felt a little bit off um, because he's not running, you know, <laughs> seventy yard runs every other run. But uh, just pulling up the stats here, he still rushed for two hundred and seventeen yards. 31 carries. Uh, his longest one was only 54 yards. <laughs> Every only. game he's had over 50. That That's crazy. We went a long time. with, And Holani is in the NFL. I mean, practice squad back and forth, I think. But he was a great back. He very rarely busted one out because he didn't have that breakaway speed. We are, we are to what Taylor was saying, we are very uh, spoiled with, yeah. with Ashton Genty. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you look at it and – 217 yards and you're like this is kind of a down night <laughs> like what's what's going 31? on 31 seven yeah. yards per carry like seven yards That's per carry worst drop, of the year. drops his average it did yeah so he's, he's incredible under 10. uh the the first thing that comes to my mind and then I, I um is that and we were talking about this a little bit before we started um i don't know if it's going to come back to bite us but after early on in that Oregon game i i think we us having two starting offensive linemen down 
is showing in the in regards to he it's a lot of these are Ashton Genty man I mean he is he is incredible but I think I saw something on on X earlier today it's like 165 of those yards were after contact he is not it's not like the Georgia Southern game where you could drive a truck through some of those holes it is a lot on him and he took he's taken a lot of hits um he's incredible but uh and Hawaii has a good rush defense, and it, they proved it. But still, he ran for over 200. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, it was just a very workmanlike workhorse. He still broke plenty of tackles. But the one, I mean, if we want to talk about any concerns, is like he, he is having to work really hard for, for a lot of those. Yeah. Um, one thing that, so if you listen to the post game, uh, Mike Sanford talked about oh, okay. uh, Hawaii's defensive scheme. Uh-huh. So a 3 5 3, right? So they're covering the. The inside, but they're also they've got the the second level, the five, That's right? Kind of where you got either safety or yeah, so can't get him outside. And that was one thing that I was thinking the whole game mm-hmm. was like, can we just get him on the edge? Can mm-hmm. we give it to him outside? Because everything seemed to be inside runs. Right. Yeah. Right. Um obviously they can see more than some dumb guy on the couch. I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> you or Dirk, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have a word with Dirk. <laughs> Um, no, but it just seemed like everything was up the middle. And that's what a lot of people were saying was like, Hey, let's give it to him on the outside because when he does, that's where he breaks through. And sometimes he'll start up the middle and bounce it out. Yeah. Uh, but usually it's on the outside is where he's going to get those big runs. But apparently Hawaii was taking away something on the edge it is my guess. And, and that defensive scheme is what, what yeah. did that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Your know thoughts, enough. Taylor Whitney. Well, is that all it takes is just do that formation and you shut us down or do the Hawaii have the personnel? Like, obviously, everybody has been trying to do well, this. Well, they didn't really shut us down. He, he yeah. did run for 217. Oh. Can <laughs> but, manage, but, m- mitigated, managed, yeah. Yeah. prevented the prevented 350-plus right. yard runs versus <laughs> – Yep. Because he had several 7, 10, 15-yard yeah. runs too. So oh, it wasn't yeah. like it was just two or three yards every single time. So, yeah, I don't know. You brought this up before we were talking, though, but I – I have the same concern as you with how much of this is Ashton Genty versus the line since those injuries. And, yeah, like the Washington State game, like he's been that incredible to rip off these huge runs, so that's the expectation. And I think the offensive line is good. But the good contrast there is that when the other running, come back, running backs come in, it's bad. Like it's probably negative yardage. Uh, we had Tyler Crow. With he, he, had he, had a, he had a good one. Uh, other than that, uh, Dylan Riley was three for four. Or sorry, three attempts for four yards. Yeah, three that rushes could, for four. That yards. That could be explained by Dubar is not much of a side to side guy. He needs a hold, it and he's kind of he fast. was out again. He's he out. was out, and then yeah. the Dylan Riley is kind of the same way. And then Sire Gaines has been out. I think he's yeah. more of a able to break the tackles more. So maybe the line's just fine, and it's just these guys need to. Yeah, outside of Genty's thirty-one carries, you had three to Riley, one to Crow, and then if you count Madsen, had four attempts. So yeah. Of the 42 attempts, he, 31 went to Genty. And quite frankly, I mean, you're crazy if you're not, if that's not the percentage, right? Yeah. I mean. Well, yeah, you'd be saying, why not give him the ball yeah, more? Yeah, so he's incredible still. Uh, he's still the. Yeah, what's the Heisman update? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the numbers, but it looked like everywhere that I saw updated betting odds was he's still in the number one place, number one spot. Um, Travis Hunter got hurt. Yeah. Early. Second quarter. I, I, think. I uh, yeah. So And they're gonna and they're gonna lose four or five games probably, right? Like that's I, not gonna what are they? Five and one now? They just they have two or no, now. no, they lost last night. I'm sorry, what am I thinking? They lost Kansas State, right? Yeah. I yeah, tra- I think Travis Hunter, um yeah. It, it it goes to show how quickly these things can flip though. Now that we're flipping it flipping the script of the Heisman here. Because I mean, for two weeks it was Genty and and um, Travis Hunter, right? And then I saw those betting odds, so I woke up this morning, didn't know how the Colorado State game went, saw the betting odds, and immediately knew that they lost. Didn't know he was injured because he wasn't on the list. Like he, it was like, it was like ten or eight guys, and he wasn't even on there. I'm like, oh, they must have lost. Um, but uh, did you guys happen to see who's number two on that list? Um, Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel. Interesting, right? I mean, and he had a. This is why we have been talking about these things the entire year is like the power four quarterbacks. It's a power four quarterback award, generally speaking. And these guys, 
are going to have these premier moments, opportunities, if you will. And he and Dylan Gabriel had one last night, right? Big time game. They beat Ohio State in a, a fantastic game. And he game. had a great run at the end to he win had a it. Great run. He threw for three fifty or three seventy or three something. No picks. Two or three inter- or two or three touchdowns. So he had a great game. Um, and he going into the year was really good, and then he kind of started off slow, but um, you know, all of a sudden he jumps to number two. So these things are very fluid, and I still maintain, and I know that there's. You know, we don't need to go into this too much. He was, uh, Genty was the workhorse yesterday, got 31 carries. Not saying he needs to do that every every game, but um, he needs to keep putting up numbers, big time numbers, and he needs the the, the highlight runs. He had one, he needs basically. Two or three per week. He, he needs a couple just to stay in that conversation so that he's still on in the Twitter sphere everywhere. Can he do um, it against UNLV? I think so. I don't think that they're great defensively. And, and I ask that because, yeah, I think it's a valid question, but it's also like he did it against Oregon. Yeah, so he can so. keep doing it. Um, but but what I'm getting at is these, I think it looked like Genty and then several P4 quarterbacks. And uh, they unfor- they play bigger games against ranked opponents on the TV networks that people watch for the rest of the year. And so uh, the interest, the most interesting thing about Dylan Gabriel is, on one hand, Oregon winning games is really good for us, right? Because if we can get to the end of the year and they're undefeated, they're one or two in the country, and we're 12 and one, um, and our only loss is a three point loss to them that we really should have won. Um, depending on what happens in the Big 12, I can see us getting that play that playoff not just in the bye. The bye. Number four. Seed. I mean, come on, BYU and Iowa State, come on. I mean, I know Mark, that they're winning uh, games. Are you discounting BYU's schedule season so far? Did what you know their quarterback's no. Jewish though? They're, they're, hey, that that's got that's a couple <laughs> ranking points right there, man. Like no. BYU's fine. They're surprisingly good. Their okay. over under was four point five. I'm impressed. They're yeah. six and zero. Oh. Um I would like to have our chances in the Big Twelve this year. I really would. I think we would fare just fine. But um, it, obviously, if those teams go undefeated or have one loss, I'm still not convinced BYU is going to go undefeated. I don't know what their schedule is exactly, but they don't. I've watched a little bit of a few of their games, and it's like they're they're winning games. They're good. I don't think they're that good. And Iowa State, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not. Maybe it's just the names of the teams and my my overall, you know, just. Disp- <laughs> And <laughs> not love you. I don't know. But what I'm getting at is uh, we want Oregon to keep winning. But if they keep winning, their quarterback's probably playing pretty well. So them winning uh, helps us, helps our team stay relevant and stay really high in the rankings. It also helps their quarterback, and it hurts Genty. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of a weird Dude, dilemma we're in. Not to spend too much time talking about BYU, but the rest of their schedule does not. I mean, they play Oklahoma State next. Which they can beat them. They have their yeah. backs against the worst up BYU, right? Um, yeah. It's at BYU. It's at, okay. Yeah. Then they play UCF. That should, yeah. University of Utah. Who looks like Kansas. Ooh, horrible. Arizona State. Who is And then Kansas. finish up with Houston. Okay. So they could That's win all those schedule. games. I wonder if they're favored in every one of those games. If not, they're cl- they it's close. Be. So they should be. Still, I don't know. The quarterback. Do they look that good enough to, uh, to go undefeated? Going undefeated is tough. I don't care who you're playing. Um, Their defense is good, and BYU always gets those timely special teams or Hail Marys or pick sixes or whatever it is. They always do that, right? I was so, getting my hair cut yesterday. Yeah. They were up one. They had, they scored two touchdowns in less than a minute in the second yeah. half, and they didn't get the ball. Yeah, They, like, turned them over twice in the 10-yard line or something crazy like that. I'm sitting there like, what? What's going on? Anyways, yeah. sorry. No, that's okay. So the quarterback, I think, is going to have one or two terrible games where he's going to turn it over five times. But their defense bails them out, I think. Yeah. Their special teams, I think. But I watched him early and I was not impressed. He's bad decision making, lots of turnovers, but he's gotten so much better. I think that's why they've I think it's there been a go. little bit of a surprise they've gone on this run. So yeah, that'll yeah. be interesting. Yeah. Uh, what about defense? I mean, we talked a little bit about oh, it. We need to. Um so there's no turnovers in the game last night. Zero. There was an side. almost Genty yeah. fumble. There's almost interception. A couple of those. I thought that was a fumble that we that yeah, we almost got a fumble I too. It was him. Yeah, we kind of stripped yeah. it. I think the guy didn't quite. Put, yeah, that was close. Um, but there was eight sacks, yeah. so it's kind of like if you can't give me a turnover, give me eight sacks, right? I, it, uh, it's usually what I'm. I'm 
I'm always conflicted between those two, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Does it have to be that way, though? I, it I, doesn't have to be. First you of all, could have we, we should probably talk we about sh- how good they were. They will, first, because we can always pick. There's always things to pick apart, whatever. Yeah. They they want this was one of those games when with the offense struggling, right? And we had 13 points till the fourth quarter. I think that's you can say the offense struggled. Yeah, Hawaii had a good defense. Uh, I don't know why their why their record's so bad. They looked better than a two and four team to me, but um, if the defense plays as poorly as it did against Utah State, we lose that game yesterday. I so I I was I don't know why they're so Jekyll and Hyde. I don't know why they're so up and down. Um, but the amount of pressure that they can get on the quarterback is awesome, and to only give up seven points to any team, let alone a run and shoot team. Um, was impressive. Yeah. So they, I think they kind of won that game. I mean, uh, Genty in the defense yeah. won that game. And, and you got to know that, and Eric Chenander, the defensive coordinator, has talked about this, but it's like dialing up pressure, you're going to make your back end weaker, right? Like those DBs are going to have to work harder because they don't have as much help. Um, so for dialing up as much pressure as we did, I mean, we held them to how many passing yards? It was not... I don't think it was 264. So we held them under 300 yards because that was their only offense. Rushing yards was 15. Yeah. Well, eight. I mean, they had eight sacks. sacks, Right. So, yeah, it's going to decrease there. But, uh, yeah, did we – that pass that went past number 41 or whatever where he got burned. That's the the outlier. You throw that one out. That was just – Yeah, a guy coming off the bench. Other than that, though, I was satisfied. I was like, man, these guys are playing hard. They're, They're playing good. We had some pass breakups. Uh, I was watching the game a little bit this morning because my son fell asleep and he thought he saw the whole game, but he didn't. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) it was so funny. He's like out of it on the couch and I put him to bed and uh, he's like trying to ask me a question, but he's so out of it. Like he can't even formulate the sentence. (laughs) And he's like, dad, did we? And I was like, yeah, we won. We won. And he's like, oh, yeah, because we got the onside kick. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I was like, go to bed. So, anyway, he was watching it this morning. And uh, it was I, – I made the note on my phone. It was 13 – no, 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 21-7. Okay. So, we had, we had scored uh, and got the two-point conversion. 21-7, but they had the ball first and goal on the six-yard line. Mm-hmm. And we that. stopped them. What happened? There's so a pen- there's a penalty in there somewhere, wasn't there? There's a penalty That's later, um, but they they threw it. We we broke up a pass. We forced them to throw it out of bounds, to throw it away, and then they threw to the left side of the end zone, and the guy was out of bounds, and we kind of oh, pushed right. him out. Yep, I remember that. That was third down, and then there was – or no, that was fourth, fourth down. But uh, on the third down, there was yeah. there was a false start. There was another penalty, penalty. I think it was holding. But it was like, what a great stand by the defense. It's 21-7. And the game yeah. was not out of reach. I think there was still six or seven minutes left yeah. in the game. And they held their ground. And they, so hats off to them to, yeah. for doing that. They haven't done that a lot. It yeah. felt. It, it seems like a red zone. I don't know the numbers. Yeah, on the I'm six sure they're not line. good, though. Yeah. So I don't think a red zone defense has been great Oh, we this had year. a huge sack by Oladipo. That's what it was oh, in one okay. of the plays. And then they had a false start. So we drove them way yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I had kind of forgotten about that. That was very satisfying when it felt like the game was in control and you're like, oh, great, they're going to go down here and score. We're going to get the ball back. I don't want this to be interesting because you're already a little bit stressed out throughout the whole second half whether it's going to be a game, right? (laughs) Because it just takes one stall. We closed it out. We did it. Yeah, because it just takes one stall drive by us and we give the ball right back to them. And And then then they go for two. And they tie it or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. They held on. Not getting too ahead of myself with UNLV, though. Did you compare stats from Utah State versus UNLV versus Boise State versus Utah State? I bet That was interesting. I watched a, it was similar, right? I mean, didn't they? I mean, they threw for a ton of yards on UNLV, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So remember how, like, it's kind of been an arc to the season, right, where it's defense is terrible. Ooh, we did pretty good at Oregon. And then uh, Portland State, whatever. We're not really looking at that. Washington State, I know there's a game in there. But at Washington State, we're like, well, maybe we turned a corner, mate. Maybe yeah. we got this figured yeah. out. And then Utah State happened. And everybody's like, oh, no, the defense sucks again. But it really was like we held them under control, and then it was just all these yards that kept piling on them. Pretty much the exact same thing happened That's right. in the UNLV game yeah. with three interceptions even. So we played a similar type score in game and yardage as UNLV. Obviously, we had them at home. UNLV went to Utah State. But UNLV only beat them by that much, 
and it was that close with three interceptions where we didn't cause any turnovers yeah. either. So something about Utah State, I don't know if we – because it looks like people ding the defense for Utah State, but – Maybe there's something to it where it's like, no, they played better than the stats suggested, and maybe they're just really good at racking up the yards in garbage time. I don't know, uh, but I don't, I don't think the defense is as bad as we think. I don't. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not trying to be, yeah, like a yeah. homer yeah. or whatever. Well, but it's just what, what, what you know. What are we going to get next week? Is it, that's the thing? It's like it just seems very up and down. But the big games we have shown up, and, and I think so. So the hope there is that we're you know how many games? Six games in so far. Mm-hmm. You, you got to think that they're getting better. They're getting more game experience. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Chenander's rotating some DBs around and trying to find the right fits. You see uh, Devon Banks out there. Yeah, you see um, just some different guys. I mean, Irby was there last night. Uh, he looked fine. He looked fine. Get, Normally yeah. we're like, oh, man, he's a liability, but he looked fine. Um, you got who else? You got um, – McCoy's almost McCoy. shut down. I don't – I never – I can't remember one time I'm like, ah, oh, McCoy – not once. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, he <laughs> hasn't I, been the problem. They don't I, throw I to him, put it I don't that think, way. either. I think he's definitely in the best corner. My I question is, what, what's the over-under on his uncle being at the UNLV <laughs> game <laughs> with a snake? Dude. How far away is that from Fresno? <laughs> was it at the was, Fresno was State game? game? The question is, how, <laughs> okay, it's not maybe that I'm far. Confused. <laughs> UNLV is <laughs> not that far. You're probably far. right. It was probably the Fresno game. <laughs> it was. Or it wasn't UNLV. My bad. Or Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. You'd think he could make that drive, though. <laughs> the que- the real question is, I think we know he's going to be there with the snake. The question is, does the camera find him well, and true. the snake? Do you, how, how well the snakes travel? <laughs> they, they they travel. I, they I travel don't know. fine. They don't, they I don't travel. like us too much of a fuss. You don't need special cages or anything? He, he puts it in his pocket. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. Like, dude, those things can go that's anywhere crazy. in that case. <laughs> that's so crazy. Back to the defense, though. <laughs> what is the deal... Man, what is what? How many turnovers do we have on the year? We have one pick and a couple fumble recoveries. A couple, yeah. How it's is like four like, or five? What, I, it doesn't make sense. I don't. It doesn't and, make. And the pick that we had, Irby had, was easy. thrown right to us. Oh yeah, in the right end zone of the us. Washington State game. McCoy, McCoy had a big time drop, like right through his hands. And it seems like we've had we're good for one of those a game, probably. They were just kind of dropping. Yeah, I one, saw but. two potentially we could have had. I don't yeah. know if they were gimmies, but. They were there. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems very odd to me that you – I mean, t- t- again, not to – but to contrast, I, what's BYU – I mean, I feel like I've watched six quarters of BYU turnovers, football, man. and I've seen 16 turnovers. Yeah. I mean, they're – you know, yeah. and it's like there's – they have white safeties. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Well, like, and, and they're making plays. The flip side of what I said, UNLV got three <laughs> picks on Utah State, and they threw it. They threw 50 times on us. We didn't get any picks. UNLV got I three. I know. It's, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um – I don't know what it is. Uh, I can't point to any, you and, know? And it just seems, doesn't it seem like it's, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but it feels like it's been that way lately, right? Like, You mean a lack of turnovers? Lack of like turnovers. the last couple of years? Like it's been something or? that we're always calling for, and we just haven't had a ton of them. Yeah, I feel like under Avalos there was one year that was like really good, and the, and the other two were kind of lackluster. Year. I can't remember exactly. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, in clo- the, the thing is, when you see games that are like, oh, that's weird, like a, a score that you don't expect, or a game that's closer, when I at least what I do is I, I'll click on the stats, and you're like, oh, that yeah, that makes sense. That team had three turnovers. That team had zero. That's why it was closer. That's why there was an upset. And you know, at some point, is that I don't know. You'd like to think at some point they start coming. Yeah. But yeah. at some point, it, you got to get turnovers I- in close games. UNLV. I think turnovers are are different to maker for sure. You can you can point to them and say. Three turnovers, yeah. But I think for us, it's on the other side of the ball with Ash and Janty going for 217 yards. It's like you're going to win the game or you're going to have a very good shot if you got a running back that goes for 217 yards. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the other weird part of it is we haven't turned – I think we're probably positive on turnovers. We haven't turned the ball over hardly at all or we're, or at zero as far as net turnovers. Yeah. So the fact that we've gotten so few turnovers and then we don't turn it over, I think both <laughs> those things together at the same time is really weird. Because usually when you don't force this many turnovers, you're negative and you're losing games. Right. So that's interesting. Weird. You know, the other thing that was really weird about that game was there was – and I don't know, what's the, what do you guys the, think the average – oh, sorry, go ahead. The facility is weird. Oh, yeah. Th- anyway. it, it was all weird. Yeah, it's like Temporary, there's a parking right? garage right there. And, <laughs> Dude, and <laughs> Get back to what you're gonna say. Sorry to cut you off. That's but fine. one of the one of the scenes, like <laughs> coming back from the TV timeout, they show like the porta potty line. 
Oh, did you see yeah, that? I did. Like, what There's are like we doing? 30 <laughs> What are we showing? <laughs> yeah. Why is this interesting? Yeah, uh, I, I kind of find that interesting. Uh, like that? Just, <laughs> just kind of see what's going Who's on there. Yeah. It kind of looked like a raceway setup. Like uh, there should have been a race track oh, where the yeah. field was almost with the way those buildings were. Huh. Well, it is. It is a track facility. There is a track. You know. Oh, but not not like, like a like a cars. Oh, yeah, yeah. cars like a speedway <laughs> like, or something. <laughs> okay, like NASCAR. Something. It, yeah, it was weird. But All right, Mark. What What do you? Th- I have no idea. But what are the average possessions in a game? Would you think that an offense gets? Because it was low, it we had four each each half. Sanford tweeted about that. Did you see oh, that? No, I didn't He's, see any of the reaction. It felt like the service academy, but passing. Yeah, yeah. It third took quarter for sure. Ever the and, ta- the time of possession though, we won that battle thirty two minutes to twenty seven. Yeah, which is weird. That was all fourth quarter. It just it seemed yeah. like it, it was just so weird. But it seemed so. We had five possessions in the first half, but one of those was a kneel down. We got the ball, and we kneeled it down. We, so we had four possessions in both halves, but that seems lower than normal. I mean, so we scored s- on six possessions, right? Three touchdowns. No. Two field goals, three touchdowns. And, and then a kneel down. We were about to score, and we, and we won the game. Yeah. So we're, we're on our way to scoring on six out of eight possessions, which I don't think is bad. That's 75%. Like That's really good, We only punted actually. it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was just a weird game, you know. The, I don't know if that was a strategy. Like you said, we had more time possession, so I don't know if we were trying to shorten the game. They were. It just the clock was running. It was just running. Well, and Ginty didn't rip off three seventy yard runs yeah, too. So that's shorter, a good point. longer possessions for us. We're not giving the ball mm-hmm. back as fast. That, that's going to yep. bleed the clock down a lot. They got him three yards. He had a lot of three yard runs, so that's going to lengthen our drives as well. Yeah. yeah. Did you, Did you stay awake for the whole game? Yeah. Taylor. Yeah. No, I played no Fortnite off. after. Yeah, you played Fortnite. No, after? I was just getting crying going, man. No, I was on vacation <laughs> with the kids. Yeah, we were playing, waiting for Brandon's dad to come down and kick you out. It's kind of like I do look forward to that. It never happens. I'm just pointing. I need to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, so we're what five and one, right? Yep. Five and one, ranked fifteenth. What do we feel about that? Are we? I mean, I think it's fitting. I, I'm not complaining no. that it, we should be less or we should no. be. I, I think it's an accurate assessment. I don't know if it was 16 or. Yeah, no, I don't. I mean, we keep climbing. I don't know if at some point the group of five teams, you hit this kind of invisible ceiling wall, yeah. where you keep winning and then you either quit going forward or teams start jumping you as they. You know, and then you start seeing teams with two and three losses that are ranked ahead of you. We haven't hit that yet. I, th- I, st- I still think that the Ashton Genty factor is big. Yeah. I mean, there's just like Dude, rankings are kind of stupid. And we'll, s- hopefully, or we'll see when the college football playoff rankings come out because those are the ones that actually matter. Um, but it's like a team like Washington State. They only have the one loss to us, right? And they're not ranked. They're like not even really close to being ranked. It's like, how are they not ranked? It's like they don't have a household name. Yeah. I mean, I, granted, we had played well against Oregon. I get it. But it's like UNLV, do you know how many votes they got? One vote in the AP poll. They were ranked two weeks ago. They lost to Syracuse. Then they pretty much blew out Utah State, right? I mean, got a little closer. They have they one vote. And it's like, well, why? Name me a UNLV player. And we're in their conference. I, Jesus. D- De, De, De Jesus. Yeah. De, the punter? De Jesus. Is he he's the punter? Back. Oh, he's, he's a running back. back. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but what I'm saying is I think that having Nash, Ashton Genty is yeah. not only helping us win and games, big time. but it's helping the PR. If you look time. at it, the media train is full speed, it's man. strong, man. So many people. I mean, you have you have current NFL, I mean, apart from the media, current NFL running backs. You have so many people that are mentioning, tweeting about it, whatever. He's on... Uh, who was it? Kevin Nagandi interviewed him on ESPN. Yep. Uh, he's been on other shows. He's I don't on know. some Christian. Did you see that one? No. He had a I, cool I interview. I saw the quote from the article. Yeah. No, I saw. I listened to part of it. I didn't get the whole thing. But I don't even know who that was with. Yeah. But it was with some, like, Christian something or other. And he, like, spoke Like he spoke to their, I don't know. It was a virtual thing. But um, it was just kind of cool. I mean, he had some some. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, there, though. But you, he's you, on a lot of stuff. You saw it start to pick up, and yeah. now he's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, Saban's talking about him. They did the X's and O's thing with yeah. Saban. And that. Yeah, that's helping. That's uh, it's helping the rankings. It's it's going to help us if we keep winning. There's no way another group of five team can jump us. Army Navy, if they stay undefeated, and that would mean both of them would have to beat Notre Dame. 
um, or one of them would have to beat Notre Dame in order. Maybe, you know, a win at Notre Dame maybe, and then you're undefeated in your Army or Navy. But short of that, if we keep winning, we're in the playoff. I mean, there, there's almost no way, that, yeah. which is awesome, a great spot to be in. A lot of these other group of five teams have fallen off, have, have a loss or two. UTSA lost to Rice. Memphis has one or two losses. Yeah, They're not really getting talked about. Now. So we're kind of, we're in a great spot. Yeah, we, we control our own destiny. Yeah, we do. Um, we have a bye week next week, which yep. is kind of weird because we've already had a bye. Weird. Um, and then we have UNLV, at UNLV. How are we feeling about that game? I'm excited about it. I, I mean, I'm excited to play a game that, that we, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I'll bet we're favored by three, three or four maybe. I think they play, so they play at Oregon State. And Oregon State just lost to Reno in Reno. Yeah. Oh, dude. So they're going to be, I don't know, they don't have a conference championship they're playing for. You always wonder about that. That was always the BYU thing. Back to, I don't know why we're talking about BYU. But after they lost one or two games, it was like, what are they playing for? You know, their they're kids, they're, you know, what, like what, what are the, exactly is their motivation there? Um, and I think Oregon State and Washington State might have that a little bit this year. But um, so it'll be interesting. If UNLV can win at Oregon State, which is not an easy place to play at, I mean, they pack it pretty well. Um, I'd like to th- – they're not going to be ranked, I don't think. But um, I'm a little nervous, but I'm kind of excitedly nervous for the game to see where we're at. Yeah. I was nervous initially with Houston and Kansas wins, but those don't make me worried anymore. But that Fresno they're game, it doesn't make sense. I haven't been able to reconcile that yet because Washington State barely beat Fresno. UNLV just spanked. And maybe that w- – was that the week – that was the week after the quarterback thing. So maybe they just came out yeah. and were just a buzzsaw that week. They're obviously solid, and that quarterback's good, but I don't know if he's amazing. And if we can get a couple sacks like we've yeah. been doing, I don't I know. Mean, we just do eight sacks. That's all we do. But <laughs> there's, a lot of diff- <laughs> there's a lot of different ways it could go, I guess. I mean, we owned them in that championship game, so that could be one of two things. We go down there, and we're like, no, we own you guys. Or they're just pissed from last yeah. year. It, it could go a lot of different ways. It's interesting, entertaining prospect for sure. Yeah. What do you think, but, man? Um, I, I think – yeah, I'm going to say we should win, obviously. Um, I'm excited. I think I'm glad to get the Hawaii game out of the way just because it's so weird. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like it wasn't that exciting. Yeah, there were some things, but it was kind of like just hang on and kind of yeah. suffer through it. I think the UNLV, UNLV game is going to have some fireworks. I think guys are going to be, you know, fired up, ready to play, ready to smack some people. So I'm excited about that. I think Genty's going to have a, a big game. Um yeah, the Hawaii game was big, but I think he's going to have some bigger runs. Yeah. Like he's had previously. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about it. I, th- I think we're going to win. Yeah, I mean, I would – yeah, I think we will too, but I think it's going to – I they're going to be the toughest test we've had short of Oregon, I think. Yeah. And so – and so you s- that's where the things, you know, that go – there's – in my opinion of watching these games for as long as I have, when you get two games that two teams that are really close, right? You, you look at turnovers and you look at red zone, right? In my opinion. And so you got to score your touchdowns, not field goals. Um, and ideally you're not, you know, so hopefully we create some turnovers. Hopefully we, you know, but I, it could go either way. Would I be shocked if we don't win it? No, I wouldn't. Um, but I think we're going to win. I think we're on, I, it just seems, of course, we, I'm not reading UNLV's, Press clippings. Yeah, I'm you not are. Uh, okay. No, <laughs> I'm not. I have no idea. But I assume that they're motivated and 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 everything. But it just seems like this team is on a mission. You know what I mean? More so, they seem very united. I'm talking about Boise State now. They seem very united. They love their coach. There's a lot of good things going on. I mean, and I know Spencer Johnson said it ad nauseum, but when your best player, when the national is like your hardest worker and your leader. That just good things happen. And yeah. Genty's a stud and he's a leader. And I don't think he didn't come back here and turn down whatever to lose these types of games, right? And so you put the ball in his hands, you put the game on his back, and I'm going to trust him, you know? Um, Dude, he, we got Dirk Cutter. I, it's just like we've got a lot of things going for us this year um, that I would, you know, and, and the other thing too is with UNLV, and I felt this way after the the um, championship game. It's like they had a lot of wins last year, but it was like, who did you really beat? And are you really there? And we just smacked, like, go away, right? Mm-hmm. 
And is it, and where are they now? Right. Have they really risen up? Are they really de- or is it a little bit of fly? you know, um, yeah, they beat a couple power four team power four teams and those teams are horrible. They're bad. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. you squeaked out a win against Kansas. Who's one in six, yeah. you know? So I don't know. I don't know if they're legit good, but the Fresno game is the one that's a, the yeah. big time head scratcher because Fresno's always tough. I mean, Fresno's tough and to beat them by 30 something. I think it'll be a good game, uh, and I'm excited for it. Yeah, I told you guys I was, I was feeling tired on the way over here, but you know what else I was feeling? Um, oh, go ahead. I don't know. I'm trying to guess. Grateful. Oh, like, hey. Thank you, Jesus, for Spencer Danielson, man. Like, yeah. So that's, some, that's what I was thinking about is that Hawaii game, the three years prior, that's the game that goes sideways, and everybody mm-hmm. loses their freaking mind because the team just falls apart, and there's so many inexplicable, unexplainable things that just You're right. happen. That game slides yeah. and slips away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so and then true. since Danielson's come in, interim, like we lost the UCLA game, but that's kind of explainable. We have no quarterback, and we yeah. held our own in the first half, and the defense yeah. you know, kind of fell apart. But the Oregon game, like Avalos, we were losing those by 30, mm-hmm. 40 points, right? Yeah. So I don't know if... Danielson should get all that credit, but obviously the facts are since he took over, these games aren't going side. Like Harsey even had two of those games a year, right? That just went completely bonkers. So the resume they pulled them out, but yes. So the resume is still short, but just Spencer Danielson appreciation. Like I think, yeah, culture over strategy type quotes all day long, and he does have him believe in and Genty and dude, Genty and Danielson combo is insane. And I'm on record saying that. Danielson is the closest thing we have to a second coming of Chris Peterson. Whoa. Sorry with the Jesus references. Whoa. I've said that a lot. Second time. coming. He's the clo- I'm not saying he is, but he's well, the closest he's, thing we have to that. He said, they, he said they talk every Sunday. Yeah, they do. Coach Pete and Spencer Danielson. Oh, I, so he's a big-time mentor. Of right. Taylor, yeah. that take you had right there, that's the reason we invite you on the show, by the way. That was a great that take. Good. Yeah. Gratitude. So, yeah. No. I, no, I, 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 I think that. it's pointing that out. I, I've done this a couple times, but when you – you look back at last season. Don't, and the, don't and, make us do it. Well, <laughs> the the places that the energy was going to was all for all the wrong things, and it was all negative, right? And then the bubble burst. Avalos got fired, and it felt like everybody just like, ah, take a deep breath, like a sense of relief. And I think right now it's like we're focusing that energy. We got the right people. It's, it's focused on making kids better. Um taking care of your business on the field, taking care of it off the field. And it's just way more fun to watch, right? It's not a circus like it was last year. That, <laughs> that, that gave us more talking points and I think <laughs> created more energy and buzz like in the media and stuff like that. But this season is, I, I don't know, it's more fun. I think it's just amazing to be a part of it. And like we've said before, like going to the blue to just watch Ashton Genty because he's so amazing is so awesome. You're not looking at a train wreck like you had last year. You're looking at something that's just a spectacle and just amazing. Yeah, we believe again. We've we've overcorrected way too much too. Like we are disappointed when Genty doesn't go seventy yards. Yeah, we're a bunch the, of whiny first babies. Play of the drive, right? right. So I think I that's, wasn't whining. There was people uh, online. Is that what you're sure. saying? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. And I do the same thing. Like yeah. every time he doesn't bust it or he's about to, <laughs> he doesn't. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> what's wrong? So it's it's like it's a whole like societal problem, right? Where it's sure. like. We, we are never happy, no matter what's happening. So, with some contrast of last B- year to this BSU year. we should, fans? Yeah. Not happy? But, like, the belief is back. Like, we, yeah. like I do think we're going to win the UNLV game. I don't know how we stack up necessarily, but I believe in our coach and this culture and this team. And the mystique is back, baby. Oh, it's back. It's back. And it goes on the road. Yeah, it goes on the road. Dude, there's quite a few people there at the Hawaii game. Yeah, it looked like it. You gotta um, think they'll be will be well represented. At we should we should yeah. be. I saw someone was saying that the round trip ticket to like Vegas for that weekend was like eighteen hundred bucks. Maybe it was for two people. It's like nine hundred bucks to I get down there. The, back. I mean, I guess you'd have to go on Spirit, but uh-huh. a while back it was like maybe it wasn't too week. bad. It was like hundred bucks round trip. What on Spirit? Yeah. Oh, on Spirit. Yeah. 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 So uh, you, you gotta help. You like, still get something then? Though. You gotta help fly the plane. Oh, okay. You gotta yeah. help. Well, of like, course, yeah. You're boarding your own your own <laughs> bags and. You're underneath. You're doing the ch- pre-check. You have to help pull stuff. start the engine, but yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. oh, so back to Danielston. What? Uh, oh, okay. I'm so sorry. You wanted to talk like this, not football. Can we go at go airplanes ahead. real quick? Yeah. Oh. This is going to be therapeutic for me. Okay. I had the most embarrassing thing that happened to me, and I'm going to share it, and it's going to set uh, me free. Okay. Okay. Really okay. This me. is our non-football story. No, no less than three times a week, 
my mind subconsciously remembers this moment, and I'm like, oh, and I feel embarrassed. So this is going to help me. So, okay. 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 I went on a cruise in January and met up with some family and went on the cruise. On the way back, I hate going to the bathroom on the airplanes. Airplane. Yeah. yeah. You do? It's, I, it's I love it. Well, okay. But I used to be like 400 pounds, too. And so, what? no, no. <laughs> you haven't seen me. I used to be like way, way, Not way. Not 400, w- though. I was pushing. I got up to 380. No joke. No way. It's crazy, right? So What are you so, now? So you're I have like, a, what, 190? Um, I'm like 225 right now. Oh, but thank you. Good. Th- you look good. I'm 190. I appreciate that. Oh, you're good. So, anyways, so crowded if you're pushing going, 400. It was, I have a, I've had a hard time going to the bathroom my whole life than you guys have, just being huge. <laughs> like, I don't even want to go into that. But anyways, I have this <laughs> negative experience of going to the bathroom. So I have this like thing I have to overcome to have enough courage to go to the bathroom. Anyways, I go to the bathroom. And I was like, oh, I never do this. I don't know how to, like, lock it. Because, you know, when you lock it, the light pops mm. in that it's yeah. occupied. Yeah, it red or whatever. So yeah. I, I played around for a minute. I was like, oh, I, I must know. And I thought I had it. <laughs> you didn't have it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I know where this is. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> okay. What, what made you think you had it? I'm an idiot. I don't know. Like, what popped? He, and you're like, yeah, we're good. He tried long enough. I that tried. Was, must like, be good. It, it, it's Did not apparent. Like, I've tried enough. Were you, enough. like, clicking the soap dispenser? Or were you, like... <laughs> I don't like know, man. What? Air sickness, I don't know. Uh, altitude sickness, I don't know. So I thought I had it because I tried long enough and it wasn't apparent mm-hmm. that it was locked. So I figured it must be automatic. It must know that somebody's in here, some type okay. of thing, which was wrong, right? So I'm in there, I'm doing my business, and I'm like not looking up. But then the next thing I know, the door is open and I didn't like it was delayed enough to where I could look up. I didn't see them, but they had a reaction and just slammed that thing shut. Okay, so now. Y- Someone just walked in on you wiping on the airplane, right? <laughs> and you got like two hours left, right? <laughs> two hours. And a good chance you may see that person right. on your way I, back. I will see them. And they're going to be looking right. for me to come out, right? Yeah. And that's when they went to the back bathroom. So now it's like this embarrassing thing already happened. And then you have to do the walk of shame after mm-hmm. that. And they're going to know it's you and you won't know that it's them. And so I had to use some like serious like mental order to just be like, is what it is, man. Like stoicism. I, th- I can't yeah. control this. I just have to walk out like nothing happened. I think you own it. You get peace signs down the aisle. <laughs> you start pointing. You start pointing everybody. Success. <laughs> good. Yeah. Anyway, so why were we, oh airplane spirit? Yeah. So anyways, crappy experience. Sorry if that was like Pun not what you were looking for. And yeah, <laughs> really embarrassing. And I I don't think I feel better actually. That was a mistake. Uh, I shouldn't have shared. Now that. there's a thousand people that now know that story as well, uh, along with that yeah. plane. Oh yeah, well, this is going on the internet. Huh? Yeah, going on the internet. Right. Uh, drop, a drop a comment if you had a similar experience to Taylor. <laughs> was it you <laughs> that walked into <laughs> me? <laughs> It was what airline was it? Uh, it was Southwest. <laughs> okay. uh, connecting flight from Denver back to here. So yeah, yeah. so probably you're on that flight. Um, that'd be send so us a sweet. message. Because <laughs> uh, what did they see? Anyway, sorry, we're moving on. Well, okay. you know, you live with what they saw. You've seen it before, yeah. <laughs> right? I, I'm gonna. I want to make all kinds of fat, crass jokes right now, but I'm not going. To, <laughs> let's move on. To the Bra- next topic. I just. <laughs> where was I going? Oh, I, last thing uh, with Danielson. Big difference on the Hawaii protocol, right? Did Business you guys trip? listen to that a little bit? I didn't. I don't know what compared it to, but yeah, what are they? Well, I mean, BJ kind of kept saying a few times that the a former coach, and I think it was Harson. Wait, did he lay down the rule like no peeing off balconies? Is that well? Was that, that, that was strict? that's a given. I think that's on the wall in the team room, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, they is didn't really? have. Or is that a joke? No, uh, that's a, well. Sorry, oh. not a very funny joke. Apparently, but no, uh, yeah, no, joke. there's n- yeah, that's not on the. That's the Joe Southwick joke. That's Joe Southwick. Um, you know the Joe Southwick story, right? Uh, there's a tweet out there that's saying I believed him when he did that interview with the news <laughs> station. I said I believed him. He, he swindled uh, me. You man. said you believed him. Yeah, I was all we've in. Had, I was like, I believe we've Joe. Had, we've had first time, first hand experience. <laughs> people Joe. tell us. I stand with you. Probably Joe. shouldn't stand with Joe on that one. I know I've heard since, but at the time I said I believe Joe. <laughs> All right. I'm a sucker. Well, anyways, but Danielson he le- he so a, a past coach I think probably Harson said that the the, the guys are going to see the beach twice while they're here when we fly over it flying in and fly over it leaving. And Danielson, first of all, their hotel was on the beach. Okay, he let them out for. I mean, I don't think it was like go play for six hours, but. I know the first night they got there, let them go out on the beach, hang out, like walk around, whatever. I don't know how many of them were playing and surfing, but it just seems like it's a different vibe, you know. Yeah. Uh, he tr- he obviously trusts his players. 
Which think, is great. Which is great. I mean, it's a player-led team. It's He doesn't have a bunch of knuckleheads he's worried about. His best players are the leaders, what we just talked about. Um, and it goes, I mean, can you imagine if you're a college kid, you fly into you're right Hawaii there. on Thursday, and the coach doesn't he doesn't trust you enough that you can walk down the road and go to the beach for an hour? Dude, you're, like, that's just not. But you're a college kid, and what's going to happen? They're going to do something. Yeah, yeah, right? So, so I think it's smart to it's let them like, have a little bit of freedom. Say, guys, like, this isn't a party. Yeah, but yeah, you can go play in the sand. You know, and and uh, so I don't know that that thought when we were up thirteen seven did occur to me like, oh, are these guys? You know, if we lose the game, is this gonna? Were they messing around? Obviously, it worked out fine. Um, but I don't know. It just goes back to Danielson, who he is, uh, um, and where we're going. So well, outside of Hawaii, doesn't he give them extra time with parents? On the road trip, Stu, or something? I've heard, yes, I've heard that. That he, instead of, like, the last coach gave him, like, an hour with the parents, and he's given them multiple hours the night before. And, and he's just seems like he's a lot more player-friendly. And we'll he, see, you know. He's the real deal. He's the perfect coach for this era of football at a non-Power 4 team, too. You have to have extra things that will keep people mm-hmm. coming and staying yep. here. And he, I think he does all those things. Yeah. I, I think also, not just Daniel Shin. Danielson, I'm sure, uh, I mean, I don't know about Shenander, but Dirk Cutter at the press conferences. Mark, you've been there? I've been there. He doesn't put up with anything. No. He, We've wanted to ask him a question. Brandon was going to. Was that the, when BJ, <laughs> was that the, the same that week? Was the one. Uh, so, yeah, so we go to the press conference. <laughs> I, so I asked a question. Uh-huh. I've asked a then question. Then Mark asked a question. At the actual press conference? Yeah, yeah. The Monday like presser. Mondays. Okay. Not the post game, but Mondays. And then I go with Brandon. And I'm like, Brandon, you're the only one from the podcast that hasn't asked a question. He's like, I'm going to ask Dirk a question. Uh. And then BJ gets into it with him <laughs> talking about that he should handle. <laughs> Which was a miscommunication, by the way. It was. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but Dirk jumped all over him and was like, yeah, you want us to hand Genty the ball every <laughs> single play. <laughs> And yeah. it got awkward, and Brandon's like, he closed his notebook. He's, <laughs> like, he's like, I'm not asking. Yeah, it's a good call. Uh, I yeah. love Dirk, though. Well, how are you guys doing with your imposter syndrome and all that stuff? We going to the press box, or is, is that not there? Is that not there? You guys doing all right with that? Imposter syndrome. I mean, <laughs> thinking that somebody's going to find out that we're not legit. I don't know. I, I yeah, <laughs> like I, I have we, no issues with it. I tell people we're like, what, what's the verdict? Does BJ hate you guys or doesn't he? Mm, no, I think no. he likes. I think he's fine. I. Yeah. I I probably and I we like be I think all those guys like us like as people. There's probably a little bit of like, maybe I shouldn't use it, but there's probably a little bit of like this is our job. We're getting paid to do this, and right. you guys are just like sure, fan like, and um, I, and I would say this to to that, and no one said that to me, and they've always been nice no, to us. So that's by the, no means, but that's I what would, you would assume. I would maybe feel that way if if someone came into my place of business. <laughs> As, and I'm a professional, right? Um, and it's been that way for how many years, right? Yeah. Like, you got yeah. same writers or... Yeah, so... Um, but I would say this to that. First of all, th- those guys are all great. And, we, and we've and we always said that. that We are... N- obviously, we're not trying to compete with them. We're not them. We... But what we do, and I think why Boise State led us in there to begin with, is that we're... It's just... We're not... We're helping the program just yeah. by a different perspective, we're three guys that went three, four now, right? That went to Boise State. That we're, um, that we have a different perspective, and we're not trying to be like. There's some people I would that are out there that are I feel like trying to be professionals, trying to you know, and we're not trying to be that at all. We're just kind of calling it how we see it, having fun. Um, but I do think uh, that that we we do. I mean, not to pat our own backs but i think that we add a little bit to the bronco nation sphere from a different perspective um but we're not trying to be professional journalists but it's been fun i I love going up there Um, our whole whole mindset going into it was we don't know what we're going to do with this access yeah we don't know like going to the press conference are we writing a story no we're not writing a story And, and that's usually why you ask the questions right you ask these questions about a certain position or a certain player so that you can write about it on your in your article right they have a goal in mind we've asked questions just for the sake of can we do it right <laughs> <laughs> and we did it hey. and i think we did it like tactfully you know we're not trying to get in the way of those people yeah. whose job it is they were relevant questions the coaches a- answered them just fine um same thing with the press box it's like what are we going to do in the press box and it's like 
we don't know, but let's go and let's figure it out and see if there's some other angle, some other access or viewpoint that we can provide to the fans that they're not getting from the traditional, uh, you know, media people. So that's kind of been our journey is like, let's look at this and see what different thing we can do. Yeah. That's awesome. and, and we're figuring it out every time. It's like, yeah. we don't know. We ride scooters to the game. You know, we, whatever. <laughs> How's your injury? You doing all right? I'm okay. Yeah, oh, I was yeah, fine. Yeah. I was, within 12 hours, I was good. But yeah. yeah. No, it's been awesome. One of the pictures you guys posted, I was able to zoom in and find myself oh, in no the way. stands, too. So I appreciate the content. You should have you should have tweeted back at us. Yeah, I think I meant to. I think I ended up sending it to my girlfriend with a heart around us in the crowd. And that's as far as that's I made it. That's probably smarter yeah. than sending it to us. <laughs> that's been fun. And we, we, we're having fun. Um so we'll see where it goes. We uh, we actually have you don't know I don't think you know this yet. Mm. We are hoping. Oh, we're not going to say it now. Yeah. I don't want it. We don't want to jinx it. Yeah, we are hoping to have a big time guest soon. Big time guest soon for our standards. Big time. No, it's for anyone's Perfect. standards. Yeah, There's yeah. very no, few no, no, people that have gotten this interview. That's true. So we're hoping to have a big time guest here coming up soon um, that we're efforting on right now. Oh, so okay. we'll see how that goes. But. Uh, Anyways, it's yeah, been we've fun. had some good ones in the past. We've had some, some great fun ones. guests. Yeah, uh, this one I think would be in a different league. Yeah, hmm. yeah, different. For Just sure. got to tease that out. We don't Anyways. know when it's happening. No, but we'll 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 work our schedules to make it happen. Yeah, if if he's gonna. Do How it. does that make you feel, Taylor? Interested? Good. Excited? Yeah, good. I w- sorry, I was good. I said, <laughs> my, my, my mind started to wander. I was thinking about my awkward there. interaction with Derek Schumann on the CUNY <laughs> Green Belt a couple weeks ago, <laughs> or a couple months ago. <laughs> My mind drifted. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not Derek Schumann, although that would be good. Do yeah. you live in CUNA? Yeah. My dad lives in CUNA, like right down the street from Derek Schumann. Wow. Or in the same neighborhood, something like that. Does he walk on the green belt? He's seen him because his house backs up to the green okay. belt, right? I didn't know there was a green belt in CUNA. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, it was oh, along the river. It's all right. Yeah, okay. obviously. There's a river? Yeah. CUNA? Oh, yeah. it's such a weird. Oh, I don't want to do story time, but I'll try and be quick. I saw him on the green belt, and I was like, that's Derek Schumann. But some reason I thought that I didn't go to senior prom. Okay. With my girlfriend? I, went to, I had a girlfriend. I went to junior prom with a teacher, by the way. <laughs> what? Mr. Hirano. What <laughs> are you talking about? Isn't that it's like illegal Judy? these days? Yeah, like, you can't yeah. do that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm robbing your story time. Hold your no, story. No, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. You I haven't heard the story, I remember Mark? this. So I was a junior. I didn't want to pay to go to prom. <laughs> no. I think it, I was depressed, but same idea. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't want to spend a bunch of money with somebody that I don't really... Okay. Did you have like a hard breakup right before that? I'm trying to no, remember that I era. I don't think so. You were you were just but jaded. I was just like, yeah. And so, <laughs> this is great. Uh, <laughs> he was Mr. Hirano. Shout out to Mike Hirano if you're out there. A lot of people probably know him, but uh, <laughs> he uh, was the student council. He led. You know, he was over student council, okay. which which organized the dance and yeah. all that stuff. And he's like, hey, just come help set up with student council. And you can get into the dance for free. And that way, you know, I could go hang out with all my friends and whatnot. And not, I didn't have to ask anybody to go to the dance. So I was like, hey, that's a win-win. I can, you know, just have fun. And so we set up uh, for the dance and did all the decorations and stuff. And he's like, hey, let's go to Galaxy Diner. So we went. I got some, oh, yeah. I got some lasagna. I love Galaxy Diner. But it was just Diner. me and Mr. Hirano. <laughs> what? That is... <laughs> Looking back, Matt, that's thinking not about, allowed. Hold on, hold on. That's not allowed. That's now. definitely not allowed. But it was just like, <laughs> dude, it was fun. <laughs> you ever seen Four Christmases? Yeah, the no. movie. I don't know but if I remember it. But I've seen it. Oh, it's so funny. You've you told need me to see it. But oh. yeah, that was my experience. Did I go on a date with my teacher? No, I did not. But I did. That's funny. I Galaxy go to Diner, Diner shout out. Yeah, it's. I remember that place. That anymore. place is cool. Taylor, what's your story? I'll man? keep it quick. So I didn't actually know who Derek was in high school even though I went, went to high school with me. Was he a year younger he than us? He was a year younger than us. Okay. I, I didn't go to senior prom. Some guy did. And when I found out about Derek Schumann later and I saw what he looked like, I was like, oh, that's the guy that took my girlfriend to prom <laughs> instead of me. <laughs> what? So I had this weird thing where I didn't actually know Derek Schumann. As he got more famous and at Boise State, I was able to realize that it wasn't him. Um, but then I saw Derek Schumann, who I do know who he is. On the green belt. Wait, so did Derek... Sh- Hold on, I'm not following. He, did he take your girlfriend? Derek Schumann did not take my oh, girlfriend. Oh, some other dude did. Senior prom. Some other dude that I thought was Derek Schumann. Because I didn't oh. know... When I found out, I didn't know who Derek Schumann was in high school. During prom. He was, wasn't he two years? Or Why did year? you have a girlfriend that you didn't go to senior prom with? I know. That went with someone else? Yeah, no. I, I suck at this. He but, knows, Mark. No, I know. Don't have to pile on. I'm confused. No. <laughs> 
I was probably listening to too much Dave Matthews Band. I was depressed or something. I don't yeah. know. I don't okay, know. okay, all right. Yeah, I just Ryan, don't. Yeah, hey, bad relationships for sure. Listen to you. Ryan Shoop and the Rubber Band. Yeah, Ryan Shoop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so I saw him on the green belt. I was like, that's Derek Schumann. But, and I can't mention it because it might be too personal, but like, I, some doubt creeped in my mind while I was talking to him that he was Derek Schumann. And then I was like, what's your name? He, so anyways, I somehow made it really awkward that I thought he was someone else. And then when he told me he was Derek Schumann, I was like, oh, yeah, I know who you are. You played for the Buffalo Bills. He's probably like, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> and it was <laughs> weird and awkward. Anyways, the whole point of all that was is you were asking me a serious question, and my mind drifted towards that awkward <laughs> interaction with Derek Schumann. We so I'm so sorry. About, it's we not a good about, story. We were talking about which guests we were going to have on, and you were not paying attention. And yeah, I was so asking you how you felt local. about this guest we were teasing, and your mind is on the green belt in CUNA. Right. Yes. <laughs> Like, which I know you guys know him personally, right? Or I don't know uh, him well. He was in, yeah, he was a year younger, you know. But I sorry, know. I I don't think I'll be back for a fifth time. So it's been <laughs> hey, real. No, you you games. had the you had the take of the day actually. So thank you. You brought you brought plenty, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you filling in. <clears throat> All right, yeah. so we got a bye week. We are efforting a big time guest. We'll see if it happens during the bye week. Not sure. There's actually two guests we have on tap that we're kind of working with. Um, we are going to try and put something out during the bye week though. Correct? We are. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be here. Um, and then, um, we'll go from there. Yeah. Taylor, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, great to have you. You're welcome back. Anytime Brandon decides to bail and go to Mexico without us. Yeah. I'll see you next year. Next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next year in October, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Leave us a comment if you're feeling, you know, like you need to talk about prom. Airplanes. Airplanes. Anything like that. All it's that good, good stuff. Do it. That was a mistake. We can edit that out. Right? Nope. <laughs> it all stays. Uh, we'll see you next time. Go Broncos.